Hello and welcome to Sparky Hobbies. My name is Ben and today I'm going to bring you a deck construction, deck tech for my white uh, enchantment aura deck. Uh, the basis of the deck is uh, the 20 planes and four non-basic white producers and also these four cards. My recent uh, pool in 2012, the Mesa's Enchantress, that whenever I play an enchantment I get to draw a card and whenever I play an aura uh, enchantment I get to draw a card with Core Spirit uh, Walker and also this Core Spirit Dancer I've been dying to play because whenever I play auras on it, it gets buffed for every aura. So these are like the basis of the deck. It's a white white deck. And already you can see that it's not a very good deck because there is a conflict in the synergy for the basis of the deck, which is the card draw. Um, if I play an enchantment, the Mason's Enchantress will always draw me a card, while the Core Spirit Dancer will not. So it behooves me to try to play auras whenever I can, rather than necessarily just enchantments. Um, one of the inherent weaknesses in creature enchantment decks is that they are very, very vulnerable to removal. And of course, removal is so prevalent that to build a deck with to, without answering this inherent weakness and try to like just take care of this in a sideboard issue is pretty much a no-go. You need to be able to really have some sort of recursion um, or protection against removal. And uh, one of my uh, non-basic lands that I have, two copies of a Memor Sky Ruin, uh, will get me back a creature from my graveyard to the battlefield if I control seven or more planes. So when is this condition going to be met? It's not going to be met until really late game. So this is not good creature recursion, but it does work. Now, the reason why uh, creature enchantment is so uh, weak to removal is because if I were to attach three auras to my core spirit dancer it would be huge it would be great right but it basically makes it a target to removal one removal would take out one creature spell while it would take out three other auras so uh, it's actually a good idea to basically have other ways to uh, either protect your creatures and the umbras would be one possibility if it would be destroyed as instead uh, all damage removed from it and uh, the aura is removed instead. That's one way to protect it is the uh, the umbras. And another way to protect it would be to actually add something like, you know, protection from color, that sort of thing. Um, to get back the auras, I also have, uh, in this particular deck, I have Nomad Mythmaker, which uh, will return target creature enchantment card from my graveyard to play enchanting your creature I control. So it's not very good for creature removal because I don't want to put pacifism back onto my own creature. But for creature buffs, it'll work fine. I also have uh, three copies of the Oromancer. When it enters the battlefield, I get to return an enchantment card uh, back to my hand so I can replay it again. Now, since I really wanted to make the basis... Woo! Okay. Since I really wanted to make the basis around the, these card draw effects... Um, there's a couple different ways to go uh, go about it um, when you're building your enchant creature deck. You could go with something like um, a creature that gains a buff, such as Thran Golem. When it's enchanted, it gets plus two, plus two, flying, first I can trample. Or you can just add fairly good creatures uh, and then just enchant them with, you know, good creature auras and buff up just normal... Uh, normally good creatures, right? But I decided that I really wanted to stick to the enchantment theme, so rather than add just good creatures that um, I could then buff later, like a Sarah Angel, I decided to go with Thran Golem, right? And um, usually you need more creatures to play and enchant than you do necessarily need the enchantments. Like, the creatures come first, right? But I so happen to have um, several copies of these uh, Urza Saga's Opal enchant creatures, which are actually enchantments. Uh, let's see if I can uh, get one here. They're actually enchantments that become uh, creatures. So this is actually an enchantment. And whenever my opponent would cast a creature, 
Um, this one becomes a 2 2 for 1. For instance, this will come as a 2 2 flyer for 2. Uh, I have the Opal Champions become 3 3 First Striker Soldiers for 3. The Opal Guardian from Time Spiral becomes a 3 4 flyer for the protection from red. And they're all enchantments, so I will still draw cards off of my Mesa's Enchantress. They're not enchantment auras, so the Core Spirit Dancer won't work, but they will. Um, they will they will still draw, manage to draw me cards if I play the Mesa's Enchantress first. Um, also, to the benefit of the idea that you would play uh, an aura onto a creature to make it inherently better would be these uh, Fringwing uh, Equinauts. They're 2-2 two, two flyers for 3 that if they're enchanted, they can tap and do 2 damage to target attacking or blocking creature. So these would be particularly good in cases where I might have Vigilance, right? Um, also, I do have like a, a little bit of a quirky ad, which is this um, quick and uh, licid. That's actually a creature that becomes a creature aura. This is pretty useful if I need to uh, want to pump up my Thran Golem or my Core Spirit Dancers. Um, I can I can go ahead and make those guys more powerful with their abilities. But it also still allows me to pay one to end the effect and have a chump blocker. So uh, for creatures in this deck, I have got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, with another uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 opal uh, creatures. Okay, so those are both creatures and enchantments if you think about it. So when you're going over what spells you want to use as removal, obviously I don't benefit as much from something as O-Ring as I would um, uh, face fetters. So my removal spell, I tried to gauge it towards auras. So if we look at, instead of a rest, I decided to choose Detainment Spell, um, which uh, Enchanted Activated Abilities can't be, play, it can't be played. Because a lot of utility creatures, such as like Jade Mage or Onyx Mage, um, I don't really care if they attack. What I'm really worried about is their activated abilities, like Spike Shot Goblin or something like that. So, And this allows me to reattach it to a, possibly a more terrifying creature in the end. So I decided to go for the detainment spell because it only costs one and it allowed me to reattach it um, rather than a rest. Uh, Pacifism is a great creature removal card. Uh, I could choose Journey to Nowhere but um, the Pacifism would draw me a card with a core spirit answer whereas uh, Journey to Nowhere would not. I do have a little bit of a uh, synergy in the sense that with Cage Hands I can uh, pay to return it to my owner's hand, and I can replay it and possibly draw more cards off of my uh, my core dancers and my maces and enchantresses. And uh, let me go ahead and get my cord a little bit more out of the way for myself. Uh, for other removal, I have the uh, instead of a disenchant, I have a seal of cleansing, cleansing uh, destroy target. Uh, Artifact or Enchantment, and um, rather than O-Ring, I've decided to go with Fey Fetters. It costs one more, which is actually a little bit prohibitive. It's funny how the difference between three and four is tends to be huge. But this will stop a Planeswalker because it'll stop um, activated abilities. So I have two copies of that for removal in this, in this deck. Um, for protection, again, it's weak to creature removal. I have um, Pentoc Ward, and I also have just sort of a good chump blocker if I want it. In the Guardian of uh, Zendikon, it's an aura that'll make a land a 2-6. Um, for creature buffs, the way that I would like to win, obviously, is uh, attach several enchantments to my core spirit walker, uh, at least one big one to my Thran Golem, and then sort of just use uh, my other enchantments spread out against because really you want to spread them out you don't want to have all of your eggs in one basket so I have two copies of daily regimen which is uh, only cost me one 
but um, puts plus one, plus one counter on each creature. The Daybreak Coronets are actually very geared towards um, the Core Spirit Walkers because it only allows me to attach it to a creature that has already been attached, okay? But it gives plus three, plus three Vigilance and Lifelink. So it is pretty good. It's a pretty good one, and I've been really wanting to use it for, like, ever. Um, the uh, Treklopinian Sight is actually more of a combat removal. It's not the best enchanters, but the idea is I really kind of want to uh, beef up one of my guys, uh, attack with it, uh, and allow my opponent to attack me, thinking he's going to get back through for damage if I'm in a race, and for me to play uh, Trichosilabine Spite, ah, Sight and untap it. Um, another one little trick is that... Uh, these is, this is not the best kind of creature pump in white. It gets plus one, plus three. If I change my creature, my uh, core spirit walker, you know, it'll do plus three, plus five. So it'll actually be quite good. But the, the real key with this would be to use it to return to my owner's hand and then play it again to draw more cards. So I have Conviction and Sun Class. Both will do exactly the same thing. Um, and uh, yeah, so that's kind of a neat little synergy um, I put two copies of armored ascension uh, creature has plus one plus one and flying for each plane it's a great target for Thran Gollum um, the new copy of angelic density in M12 this is just a bomb card because you just put it on the smallest creature that you can find and it becomes like a huge 5-5 five five angel right and uh, just totally reoccurring when it when the creature would die it goes back to your hand um, again, if you want to protect something, this gives uh, the Umbras. I have two copies of this. It gives plus three, plus three, and Vigilance. And really, um, tapping out with your really large creatures is quite a bit of vulnerability in the sense that... Uh, in the sense that like you're not going to have as many creatures as you would like in a normal creature aggro deck. So being able to somewhat protect your creatures with like the Umbra ability... And also being able to attack and block, you know, not not tap out when you're attacking is huge. And obviously Celestial Mantle, if you can get through and double your life, it's just amazing. So um, I've, I've played this card a little bit, and uh, it's, it's worked out well for me. It's very cost prohibitive at 6, but, I mean, if you can double your life, it's usually definitely worth it. Um, uh some other cards that I have in the deck um, would be this uh, Righteous Aura, Pay 2 Life, and Prevent Damage from Any One Source. Uh, I've actually found this to be very useful. I've, it's continually underestimated, um, but you know I've stopped fireballs and all kinds of huge creatures. Um, the Greater Oromancy is a little bit of a tricky card because if you want to continually enchant your core Spirit Dancer, uh, Giving your creature shroud is going to make it very hard to like you know work past that. You're not going to be able to target your own creature. But if you're playing with against a lot of removal, it might be might be wise to sort of just spread out the love and uh, play Gorda Armancy and make your cards more hard to hit. Uh, this card I've played with it and it's a bomb. Whenever you play an enchantment spell, you put a four four white angel creature token and with the card draw. Uh, this card can be nasty, you know. I've gotten five, four, four flying angels out before, just because uh, it's so. Uh, it's just, it just, just so works with the synergy. Um, the other two non-basic lands is I have two copies of the uh, Shajiri Step um, that allows one of my creature gains protection from creature, uh, protection from color until end of turn. This is mostly to, like, none of these creatures are ever going to have trample because it's pretty much a white aura deck. Um, so if I really need to get through for damage and, like, they can block, you know, with a hundred tokens or, like, one huge 40-40 creature or something like that, um, I want to be able to get through. So I have two copies of those. Um, I think that's pretty much all about this deck. Um, I'd like to go over some of the decisions in making the deck, so I'm going to go ahead and stop this video here. And if you'd like to listen to some of the different decisions uh, I had with the deck, like why would I play uh, Face Fetters? Why would I play Face Fetters instead of O-Ring? 
Well, you know, obviously the synergy is to play aura spells over enchantments because I have a conflict in synergy. So uh, I figured I'd go over a little bit of other cards that I had um, when I built this deck that I decided not to put in this deck and sort of the reasons why. So I'm going to let you go, and I uh, hope you uh, had fun, and uh, if you like, you can watch the next video.